Welcome to the fight game. He's Ice Water. I'm Puma. We're going to talk about some fights for the beginning of the year. Better be is going to be fighting Smith. And how are you looking at this particular fight on the 13th? I mean, it's really weird because Callum Smith has shown that he can hang with it with, with a few folks. He has some skill sets. Uh, Better be is 38 years old, which I really didn't until really recently understand that. But the age plays a, a role. But Better be is is a tough customer. Cal Smith better be very careful because uh, Better Beans can can bring it and even to the point where Cal Smith said he think he can knock out Better Beans. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We hear you. Uh, you get the ring so with that fast, man. my friend. <laughs> uh, yeah. We hear you. That's, that's a dangerous statement because uh, – you know what Better B was looking for? You know, he's looking for trying to uh, get ready for the the other big, big fight that he can possibly have. So uh, from the one man that uh, the other man besides Floyd Mayweather, that'd be Canelo. So uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to see that plays out. But I think it'll be a good, entertaining fight. Uh, Styles do make fights. I think it's kind of a different type of fight where you, we might get some real action. But uh, I think it's a great fight to make. And you just convinced me to kind of tune into this fight because I, I kind of didn't, you know, wasn't really focused on this fight. Uh, but um, as you were talking, I was thinking about both of them and watching them in their their last few matches. And the styles um, uh, is, is going to be interesting um, with these two. But And they're in the light heavyweight divisions. And, um, you know, they're looking at Baval and they're looking at all these other fighters that they can um, go to next. So uh, it should be a uh, what they call a barn burner, and um, them folks trying to get those big time fights, and especially in a light heavyweight division. But uh, let's go to the heavyweights real quick because uh, on March 9th, I know we're we're far away from that right now. But March 9th, Joshua and Ngannou, uh, the guy who I felt beat Tyson Fury, uh, signing up. And under the undercard, you have Wilder and Zhang. This is a fighter. Zhang is a fighter. I think he's an Asian fighter who I've been looking at for a long time. And I really haven't been talking about on the show because I, I don't know his competition or who he's been fighting, but he's a knockout artist. And, and he has, a <laughs> dep depending on how you look at it, he has a strong chin of the folks he's been fighting. And, um, and he's not going to be an easy, to me, he's not going to be an easy fight for Wilder based on Wilder's last performance. If Wilder doesn't get his weight up, this guy can knock him clean out of the ring. Uh, I've seen this guy's power before. And if you haven't had a look at Zane, go to YouTube, watch this guy. Um, he's a heavyweight, I think, from China. And he is no joke. <laughs> he, can, he got some knockout power. Uh, your thoughts on those two bouts? Because I was surprised that they put it under the undercard, maybe trying to um, sweeten the pot a little bit with a, a Joshua and a Wilder fight coming at the end of the year. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And you notice that this is going to be in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing over there. So from the standpoint of if uh, Joshua does win and Wilder wins, it's ready-made. Let's go ahead and get this done and whatnot. But uh, I think this could be a very dangerous uh, fight for Anthony Joshua, and I'll tell you why. We saw the re rejuvenated Anthony Joshua in the last fight, right? He looked pretty good like the guy that we know. Uh, he has his brother's trainer in, new trainer he's worked with before. But uh, this could be very dangerous because my question that I really have to ask is, is he going to be Anthony Joshua that is consistent, right? And we know that the gentleman, as you said, uh, Francis N. gave uh, Fury lots of trouble. And, and sometimes it's almost like Anthony Joshua can go Go get go start a sleepwalking type crusade, right? Which is why we think he lost twice to to a Usyk, because he just didn't come with the same energy that he's had in the past. So this is a very dangerous fight. Um, I'm kind of wondering about it because uh, this is a former you know UFC MMA fighter coming in. He's only fought once, and if you take it for granted, kind of like Fury did, you could be down. So I think this is a very dangerous fight for a. Uh, Anthony Joshua, if he does not come in handle his business, he's the boxer. He's been doing this for years. He should come in, handle the business, get this guy out of here. Thought the same thing with Fury. 
get this guy out of here so he can move on. That's what I'm a little nervous about. Um, Wilder and Zhang, I know you big on Zhang, but uh, for Wilder to even take this fight, I think it tells you that he probably felt like he didn't give his best performance and he really wasn't hurt or anything to that effect, which is why he jumps right back in right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, just FYI, quit changing the styles. He's not a boxer coach, okay? Just out of uh, 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 a layman's perspective, Wilder's not a, not a boxer, so he's not going to be boxing nobody like that. Let him come out, do what he does. Zane's a big guy. Don't bring in, uh, don't wear any costume stuff to the ring. And don't put him in a, what that kind of crypto, or whatever kind of, whatever tank, no oxygen tank before, six weeks before the fight. Simply let this man train, come in like Mike Tyson with a towel over him and with no socks on. So he can get to the fight and have his energy. He needs his energy because when Deontay Wilder does not have his energy, he's a different dude. So don't be bringing up and trying nothing new. Let this man live and let him be who he is because against this uh, Zhang uh, opponent, it could be very tough. And, and in order for him to win, I'm talking about Wilder, he needs to be the Wilder we're accustomed to. I don't think he's too old. I think he's enjoying himself, enjoying life. Not sure if he still has the killer instinct. So uh, take him away from his family. I know y'all think that sounds harsh. Take him away from his family, let him train, let him get mad, and let him do what he needs to do to win to try to win this fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was curious why Joshua just bypassed Joseph Parker, just bypassed him, and then went to Nganu. And maybe it's for money. Maybe it's for, you know, he thinks this is a, a, a quick win and they can set up that Wilder Joshua fight like they had it before and, you know, and start that. I'm thinking it, it may be a trilogy. Start that trilogy and, and you know, to see who's the baddest man on the planet at the heavyweight division. But uh, I know Joseph Parker got to be feeling some kind of way that I beat the, the guy that you thought you were going to fight. Now you're, you're running away from me. And this was the conversation with all the heavyweights before the, the last card that, hey, guy, you're running away from fighters that, you know, you know that can beat you and you're kind of dodging all of us. Why won't you fight us? Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. But like they say in, in, in entertainment and boxing, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. <laughs> How can you get excited about Joseph Parker? I mean, he did win B. Wilder. But, uh, and we even explained thoroughly on the show about how he went about it in the business. But can Joseph Parker provide that same energy and, and that same effort versus Anthony Joshua? And we don't know that. Granted, you say, well, you be wilder, you deserve a shot. Do you, though? Know? Is that once in a lifetime effort that you gave with wilder? You caught him on a bad night? So Joshua going to go, well, yeah, come on, I'll fight you. What is he going to get out of that? But if you fight uh, uh, Francis in, you know, it's a little more hype, a little bit whatever, and uh, he has a puncher's chance, people might get up for that. Plus two, if you are in the same card as Wilder, and it happens the way you think, everybody thinks it was, you got a ready-made promotion, same day, same night in the ring. Yeah. Too bad they don't do an old school fight where – you won your first one, and then you get in the second one. See, that's how they used to do back in the day. <laughs> Round robin, you know, cage match. Why the, what they call a battle royale? The wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you find some We're coming with that, that wrestling, that show coming up. We're coming with that. We're coming with that this year. We're coming with that this year. Uh, any other boxing news or fighting news? Yeah. Um, come to find out that uh, Earl Spence Jr., uh, we know that he had the test retina from the last fight, uh, had cataract surgery to repair his eye, and that's that's major. That's hard to come back from. Uh, we know Sugar Ray Leonard back in the day did it, but uh, I'm not sure. I mean, you can heal from it, and, and Sugar Ray had a few more fights after that, but uh, it's a dangerous thing, particularly if you keep getting hit in the eye and, and facing facing quality opponents. It might be time for Earl Smith to kind of to um, wrap it up and cause a great career, but I know he's a fighter and he'll still wants to keep moving forward and doing some things. 
Uh, also, too, uh, congratulations to Virgil Ortiz uh, for winning the, at 154. Uh, amazing. We thought he was going to be at 147. Uh, Try to mess around with Boots Ennis and whatnot. But I guess he's like, you know, I'm feeling kind of heavy. Let me see what I can do at 154. Not saying he won't come back down to 147. But that's a fight I would love to see, Virgil Ortiz versus uh, uh, Boots Ennis. But I know that right now it may not be a big money fight. So therefore, it's not going to be out there uh, like that. But um, it'll be interesting to see how it moves on. Um, I am, though, definitely looking forward as we move up in the heavyweights. February 17th, uh, Fury versus Usyk. I've been waiting on this fight for a long time. I think it's going to uh, be about fireworks. And I think Fury is going to kind of show you what's going on. Because you imagine if, if Fury wins that fight, he pretty much has all the belts. And then if uh, Joshua and Wilder win, then you could have, you know, some things going on there. Maybe have a big old meet and, meet and greet in Saudi Arabia with Fury fighting somebody. And then, you know, you get back at it again. I just don't, I think, I'm not sure if people want to see Wilder versus Fury again, right? No. I know I don't. No. They were great fights, but I think Wilder's kryptonite is Fury. But I would love to see Fury, I mean, Fury versus Joshua or Wilder versus Joshua. So I think we got some other intriguing things coming up. Uh, um, they said that uh, Devin Haney was supposed to be looking to fight Garcia. But apparently Garcia is going to pull out and out of that fight and fight uh, your boy Rolly Romero. Okay. Who has a title. And the great uh, Floyd Mayweather said, look, you need to have a title. So if that's an easy title, which people are thinking, it'd be easy for Garcia to get. Then you come back over there. It also helps with your person and, and money as well because you have a title. So you got to be strategic about this. But I hope that we get some of the bigger fights we've been waiting for for this season, for this year. And uh, I think it's going to be epic. Yeah, I, you mentioned about Earl Smith Jr. and the, uh, the retina and um, cataracts. And I, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't frown upon him just retiring at this particular point. And if he retired, you know, um, I know he doesn't want to go out that way. I know he wants to continue to fight and, and be as great as he can be. Uh, but when you're playing with your eyesight, uh, Sugar Ray was one is, is one fighter that I know that, um, and not to say Spence is not crafty and, and, and smart and intelligent, but Sugar Ray was, um, he wasn't one of my favorite fighters, but you can always, um, count on Sugar Ray being smart in the ring and being protective of anything that um, is, was going to be uh, damaged on him and that people were coming for him and he was he was able to uh, elude a lot of the um, injuries um, when he had his, um, his retina uh, situation going on. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure after seeing that Terrence Crawford fight um, if Earl Spence can do that. So um, best of luck to him, whether or not he, he decides to continue or to call it quits, um, but your eyesight's not worth, um, you know, just just losing that um, and, and fighting's not worth that. So that's my two cents. No doubt, no doubt. All right, he's Ice Water. I'm Puma. And this is Fight.